Here's something on this Admiral record player that I've not seen on other record players, so I'll go ahead and show it to you because most of this is pretty standard, and I've done two or three videos on record players, so I don't want to bore you guys. But there's this cork. It must be like an isolator. This cork disc that uh, sits on top of the platter bearing. And so I used a couple of tools like this and kind of, because it was pressed down in there pretty good. I don't want to push it down in there and foil. I guess I just did anyway. So, so this cork disc, you have to get under it like so with a couple of dental instruments. I always keep these dental instruments around. You can get cheap ones at Harbor Freight. They're very handy. And you slide this bugger up. Now I'm going to set it aside, okay, but I'm going to set it aside oriented the way I found it so that I don't get confused. And now I have this little top, this like a top race for this bearing. I want to be real careful not to scratch it, but I do have to get it out of there. I may take a magnet here in a second. That may work for me, but it might be aluminum. It looks like it's aluminum. So I get under it with these dental instruments great now I'm gonna set that down the way I found it okay everything's oriented the way I found it and in order so that when I clean them which I'll clean them one at a time I put them back in order and I don't lose track of where I was now I have this video to help me but you may not be doing a video so this is one way you can kinda of keep track of things alright let me see if I can do this without getting my hand in your way now this bearing here has got kind of a shape to it, a, a cupped shape, so you can get inside of the bearing and grab it with the dental instrument. As long as you don't scratch those balls, there you go, you set it aside, okay? Now there's like a bottom race. Actually, sometimes that's part of the platter. Yep, that one is. So now, what I want to do is get all that cleaned out, because that will have old grease and it'll be all sticky. So I'm going to do my usual trick. A little bit of lacquer thinner. Okay, this is my first pass. Look at all the junk that came out. So, let's do another pass. You're never going to get every little bit of it out. This isn't going to be surgery clean, but it's going to be a hell of a lot better than it was when you started. Right? See? Look at that. Nasty, nasty. Okay, perfect. All right, that's getting pretty clean. Now, one at a time, I'm going to clean these little things. Remember, now this thing faces cupped upward, okay? The open side is upward, closed side is downward. I'm going to take this over and clean it out. This kind of thing is easy to do. Yeah, I just, uh, I, I'm real simple about it. Nothing sophisticated. I just uh, soak it in a little bit of lacquer thinner, kind of go in, into it a little bit with a toothbrush. The idea is I want to get the, all the old grease out of there. This one didn't have a whole lot, but it also was having a hard time turning, so it does need that grease. What it doesn't need is for that grease to be sticky and nasty. You just, you, just, you know, kind of do... Just like you were doing a bicycle wheel bearing or your car's wheel bearing, you're just going to get it clean, okay? Try to take care to use non-metal instruments to clean it so you don't damage the balls. And then you give it a good rinsing with some lacquer thinner because lacquer thinner really doesn't leave much of a residue. And you don't wipe it off, you just sort of let it air dry. Now, I'm going to go through it a little bit more, a little bit more of a detail cleaning. Try to get around those balls because that dried sticky lubrication will pack around the balls and then it prevents the new lubrication from doing its thing. Okay, so you see, let me rinse that off. Don't be stingy about the lacquer thinner. Um, please note, I am ventilating. See, nice big open window, okay? You should do the same. Okay, get in there, clean around all the balls, get all the old, old grease away from the balls. That prevents the new grease from working. Get it all clean. And rinse it off. Same deal with this guy. See, this side has got a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of, 
corrosion and stuff on it. It's machined just like the other side, but it's a little corroded. It hasn't been, the balls haven't been riding on it. But this side here, if you look carefully, you can kind of see the witness mark of the balls having ridden on this side, and it's nice and clean. That's the side you want facing the balls. You don't want to put this side on there because that pitting that's on this surface here will damage those balls. Okay? This is a bearing, just like a wheel bearing in your car, and you want to pack it with grease. You don't want to go crazy. You don't want to have so much grease in there that it is oozing out everywhere, but you do want grease in the bearing. So you pack it just like a ball bearing. You get it on the, bear, the balls, and you kind of force it down into the, the balls. Okay? I'm going to start on this side, but that's the other side I'm going to spend most of my time worrying about. Okay? I use... If those of you that don't already know, I use Singer Sewing Machine Lubricant. And why do I use that? Because it is designed for slow-moving, small, light-duty machines. And uh, that pretty well describes a, a record player. You know, 33 RPM or even 78 RPM is not that fast. We're not talking about 6,000 RPM, okay? All right, so now, just like a ball bearing in your car, you're going to pack this with grease. Okay, and you do it the same way you do in your car. You take it and you force it down in there. It's pretty easy on this because it's an open bearing. You get plenty of it in there. You make sure it gets around the balls by pushing it, right? When you push against it, the, the pressure right around where your finger is pushing will squeeze that lubricant down around the balls, okay? You really don't want any dry spots on the balls because that's where wear will begin right away. And once you start a wear pattern in any kind of a... Uh, rotate rotating device that wear pattern will continue until it wears out so you want good wear pattern and you do that by lubricating I want a little bit of lubrication on this lower race doesn't have to be a lot because I'm going to turn it and it's going to spread it around I've lubricated the snot out of this bearing drop it down over the spindle there we go wait a minute I did that wrong those of you, you guys didn't notice that? You didn't stop me? Come on. Now, it probably wouldn't matter that I put this on upside down. But, I don't want to do it any other way than what I, what I saw when I took it apart. So now, I got a real problem here because I got to get this back out. Let's see if I can do that. What do you guys think? Think I can do it? I got to do it without scratching it up. So, let me try something. Yikes. How did I manage to do that, guys? Couldn't you help me here? Couldn't you tell me? Hey, dummy. All right, so let me set these aside. I know how they're supposed to be oriented. Let's let gravity help me out here. Doggone it. It would have been nice if you guys had told me. Okay, that required a little help from gravity, our friend gravity. So let me see if I can do it right this time. Here we go. Okay. Bearing is back down on the spindle. Let's put a touch of lubricant on this upper race. Not a lot. Just spread it around just so I don't have anything dry. Remember, I don't know how long this is going to sit before I actually fire it up. Okay. Drop that down. Okay. I say enough is enough. Let's wipe the excess grease off of things. I don't like to use q-tips on things like bearings because they leave q-tip hairs everywhere. So this is what I'll do instead. I make a little paper towel q-tip. Okay. And I get in there and I wipe it down this way. Alright, that should do it. Finally, last step. Take this little cork disc, which I think is a, a, a means of isolating vibration, you know, a vibration damper. Just drop that down there, and uh, that thing was resting down on that bearing. And look at that. Smooth as snot. Perfect. That platter will rest down on that and spin as free as anything. All right. Piece of cake, guys. Let me show you what I did underneath while I'm here, and then uh, we'll move on. Okay, here's a look at the basic mechanism of the record changer without the motor, okay? 
and you see there's a few moving parts not a lot but a few you've got a slide mechanism here that uh, if I remember correctly has to do with the reject but I'm not sure because it connects to that center knob that comes up through the the, the mechanism and that's the reject so this had to be lubricated now I'm not completely finished yet because I haven't wiped the excess off of everything yet but um, I've gone ahead and and lubricated the slide points with a little bit of sewing machine grease I like sewing machine grease because it tends not to dry as sticky or as fast as other greases I always wipe off the excess so I got that done there's another mechanism that slides and that's right here okay so there is a lube point right down here where it slides in the slot almost without exception when you see a slot in a record player record changer or an edge that rides in a slot that's going to be something that you'll need to clean first and then lubricate okay so first thing I did is I used up an awful lot of paper towels and q-tips to clean these slides off you can see that sliding point right there you clean it off and then you put some lubricant on it and then the same thing with this guy here there's a sliding point here where this edge rides in a slot uh, formed by two discs okay watch okay you clean that and you lubricate that Parts of the machine that involve larger movement or me a lot more metal to metal movement and less rotational so sliding movements I tend to use grease on okay that pin rides along this edge that I lubricated with grease but then there will be rotational points okay places where things are rotating that I tend to use not grease but this stuff right here Singer sewing machine oil same deal it's designed for slow moving light duty machines which is exactly what a record player is so i will lubricate pivot points like this pivot point here here's one see it's a pivot point the way i do that is it just requires one drop placed onto a screwdriver okay see if you can see that see see that's wet with a drop of oil then i go to the pivot point say i want to lubricate this pivot point right here and I let that drop just sort of run into that pivot point and invade it. And then you move it right away. And I'm telling you, the capillary action will spread that oil in there and it'll get nicely lubricated. And then, real importantly, after you move it a few times, dry off the excess. Because you don't need a lot of oil there, you just need to create a film. So get the excess off of there because that stuff will get on things and create a place for dust to collect, okay? So lots of pivot points. There's one right here. There's one right here. Actually, this one. This one right here. I took this C-clip off of here and lifted this brass cylinder off, cleaned it, cleaned the shaft, and then I lubricated it with sewing machine grease. Okay. But here's, see, there's pivot points here. There's a pivot point right there. Lubricated that with a little oil. Pivot point there I lubricated with oil. Lots of those pivot points, okay? Get those with a little oil, get a little on the screwdriver, touch the point, and the oil will, through capillary action, will go into that spot. And then when it's all done, when you get everything lubricated, don't do this beforehand, because you'll just make a mess for yourself. You go in and you wipe the excess off. You don't have to be crazy about it. You're not trying to make it dry. You're just trying to get rid of a place for dust and crap to collect, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of these clean. Get the excess off of all these lube, lube points so that it's not messy under here. And then I'll get back to work on the rest of the record changer. We're going to start to take a look at the motor now. Um, looks like here are the two clips that... Uh, remember I, I said in the very first peak, the first look at this thing, that there were supposed to be three clips, but only two of the clips were present. So. They go from the they go through the grommet from the bottom up. So I'm going to take those out and set those aside. And all I really want to do is uh, just clean the motor up. There really isn't anything wrong with it. In fact, it turns really freely, so I don't see any need to go taking it apart and messing with the bearings. I'll put a couple drops of machine oil in there. They look clean. It looks like it actually hasn't been used that much, so. I'm going to just lubricate it a bit, and that should be good. However, remember I noted when I did the first look at this thing that this fan was loose. So I want to take a look at that real quick. Pull 
pull a little funny clip out of there. Set that aside also. The fan lifts right off. Well, it should lift right off. There we go. And then there's a little fiber washer on there. And then there's another clip. Not quite sure why that clip is even there. But while I have that apart to this level, that's a good time to get a little lubricant down in that bearing. It really does turn freely enough, guys. I seldom run across these that turn freely enough that I don't have to worry about them. But this is one of them. Okay, so we're going to take one drop of oil and get it on the screwdriver like we always do. And then let it run down the shaft. Spin it, spread that lubricant around. Motor is turning very, very freely. Go ahead and clean that top of that bearing off. But really, it's it's very clean. Drop of oil on the screwdriver. Come down here to the shaft. Oops, I touched the wrong part of the shaft, so I need to do that again. There we go. Drops right down into the bearing. And then I'm going to dry off where I touched in the wrong spot. Alright, so let's spin that motor. Yep, very free. Very nice. Now, what to do about this fan, this loose fan. So this little, this real thin little washer here goes on the shaft here. That little, little thing goes on there. Now this fan, yeah. I'm thinking another washer goes on this side of this fan to help stabilize it. Let us put a little bit of power to this motor and see what happens. Very axon. Here we go. That's gonna make that's gonna make a lot of noise. It's 120 volts. It's making a bit of noise. Not quite sure why. You know why? Because this fan is just hitting this little bell housing right here. Let's turn this variac off and let's let's uh, let's rearrange these washers. Okay, I'll show you what I mean. If you look real carefully, if you look real carefully, you see that that fan is hitting this right here, this little housing. So I'll take one of these washers and I'll put it underneath the fan instead of on top of it, and that should take care of that. There we go. Yeah, that's much better. Much better. I can actually feel the air that little fan is moving. Wow. Okay, guys. So uh, I think that record, this uh, record player motor is pretty well ready to go. Okay. Let's check this switch out. All right. Okay, I think we're good.
Perfectamundo. Something I'm going to try here is to take a very small o-ring and place it on this shaft to kind of tighten and see if I can't squeeze up against that fan a little bit and uh, stop it, you know, have it fit nice and tight so it doesn't uh, vibrate and it doesn't, uh, so it spins the full speed it's supposed to spin. So let's try that. Don't know if it's going to work, but it's worth a try. Oh yeah, and I lost that little clip. You got to be careful with those things, guys. That damn thing got away from me. There we go. Now, this fan will turn the speed of the motor. It's still free to turn a little bit, but it's not nearly as much as it was. And that O-ring will absorb some vibration, and this thing will actually vibrate less. So, really nice. That's going to work out great. Here's a close-up view of what I did. Okay. Put a little C-clip there to replace that missing uh, hairpin clip that I lost. I put a washer down there like I showed you, but then I put an O-ring between that washer and the fan. That O-ring allows some flex, some movement, but it basically keeps the fan going the same speed and up nice and snug against the shaft. So it's not going to vibrate, and it's not going to slip, so it should do a nice job of cooling as well. So I think the motor is ready, guys. So let's set it aside now and get, get working on the rest of the mechanism. I want to show you something. This is one of the reasons I suggest all the time for you guys to make videos of your work. So I'm a little bit confused about how this record changer goes back together. Mm -hmm. So I'll just watch my own work. And uh, it's really a handy way to remind me of how things were when I took it apart. So uh, again, I can't emphasize enough guys, record somehow how you did the work, okay? So uh, this, this is a good way, video is a good way, photographs are an okay way, drawing pictures are an okay way, but I really think video is probably the best. Okay, I'm going to gather together the parts now, but here's the idler wheel for that bugger. So that's, this is a, you know, a fresh idler wheel from Voice of Music, Gary sent that to me, and then I had to send this, this cam wheel off to Voice of Music to be rebuilt and they they just do a stellar job this is a nice wheel it's gonna work out great you know it doesn't look like it'd be anything terribly hard if I really wanted to do it and I had rubber the right size but why would I want to chase all that down when I got somebody who really knows what they're doing who's competent who stands behind their work and will do it for me I've got better things to do this is not my area of expertise that's Gary's area of expertise mine is putting this to good use in the record player so I have this thing, I have these parts, they're ready to go. Now on the bottom side of that record changer, I mentioned in an earlier video in this series that there was a cam that operates the reject mechanism. There's that cam. I'll clean it up a little bit before I install it, but there it is. And I'll be referring to my video to install it correctly. Okie dokie, I've got the record changer supported up on a box now. And I'm going to take a real quick look at my video and see what it looks like. Okay, I look at the video and I noted that this wheel here, it uh, comes in from the, the top side of the record changer through this opening here, and it drives this cam, that heart-shaped cam that fits in here. So what I'm going to do, I don't want to get any grease on this wheel, so just for while I handle it, okay, I'll remove this when I'm all done, but for while I'm handling it, I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of tape on this wheel that way if I touch it with grease um, I only touch the tape and then then just before I'm all finished I'll go ahead and remove this tape okay it's not a big deal let me make sure I've done that yeah I could I, that should be okay I'm gonna put a little bit of grease on this wheel here not a lot because I don't want it migrating to this rubber and uh, that'll lubricate it some and uh, let me make sure I yep I did clean inside there Okay, I'm going to just touch that bushing. 
there's like a brass bushing in here that this wheel shaft rides in okay now I'm going to take a little bit of that grease and I'm just going to spread it around pretty evenly on this wheel hub right here okay try not to scratch it with the screwdriver while you're doing this okay it doesn't have to be perfect because when you put it in there and spin it's going to spread it around now we're going to need to mount this heart-shaped cam on there okay this this little shaft right here is going to ride let me think here how's this going to work I don't think it goes in there. That's threaded. I believe it rides in here somehow. You look at the pictures. Okay. Ah, it should have been obvious. This thing here, this edge, rides against this little, this little uh, roller right here. Okay, this is basically a cam and cam follower, okay? So I'm going to I'm going to lay it against there and then, and then this slot fits over this this uh the semicircle right here. The uh creased part of the heart goes against that roller. Okay, looking at the the uh the video, the heart the crease in the heart of this this cam up on the top um kind of faced it was just this side of the spindle. Okay? So I've got that oriented more or less correctly. And now I'm going to go ahead and put this guy on there. And this little part of the heart right here is going to face, okay, going to face this little cam follower, okay? So there was some hardware holding it on there. Okay. Now from the witness marks, it looks like there was a big washer like that, and then a smaller washer that sat right on top of it like that. And then this screw, which has a star washer in it. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and feed that down in there. Yikes. Takes three hands to do this stuff, guys. And then if I remember right, this thing here, and I probably should have done that first, uh, there we go, is going to fit right over that, okay? So that's going to operate that as this goes around, okay, that's going to move this thing back and forth like the connecting rod of a locomotive. And this would be the, uh, the crank throw of a locomotive. So if you've ever watched the side of a locomotive as it's running, I don't know, pretty far-fetched example, I guess, but it works. This spring is part of it too, but we're going to get to that in a second. There we go. Now I will lubricate this after I'm done with this work. I don't want to be handling it with a bunch of greasy mess on it. Okay, I'm going to put this idler wheel into the motor assembly now. And before I handle it much, because I'm going to have lubricant you know, in, in the neighborhood and stuff like that. I, I did what I did with the other, with the cam, and I put some painter's tape around the perimeter of this rubber wheel. That way, I'm less likely to touch it and get grease on the rubber. It's just a small detail, but it really can help me. I don't want to get grease on this rubber at all, if I can help it. Now, if you refer back to, I think it's video number two in this series, I, I, I detail this idler wheel. I'm going to go ahead and put the idler wheel back into the motor now. It goes through this, this bushing right here and comes out the other side here. And then there's a little, there's a couple of uh, shims, fiber shims that go there and a clip that secures this in place. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to lubricate this motor with the same stuff I've been using. That's this Singer sewing machine grease. So let me go ahead and get that done. All right. Idler wheel's in place. This is prepared now to be installed onto the uh, onto the the platter, but I do need to two of these motor mounts are actually really good. 
they're just about right and there's no need to replace them they're not cracking they don't even when I try to crack them they won't so someone replaced two of them that's probably why I have two of the clips and then they probably lost a clip and they didn't bother to replace this third one so I have to come up with something that's going to kind of match these so I'm going to take a look at what I have it's better to do, try to do it now than when I'm ready to drop this onto the platter the closest one I have to what was already there which is this guy right here are these small ones for the uh, little RCA 45 players not exactly the same but pretty darn close and it's the right height the right hole sizes the only difference is the base size is just a little bit smaller as you can see but it still works to mount the motor onto the record player base Admiral used these goofy little clips right here and uh, what they are is they were supposed to go through the grommet like so and and they went up into the record changer and snapped into a little hole they, these little these little tabs would clip it into a little hole and then it suspended the motor hanging from these little tabs well these things are junk you look at this one here one of the tabs is broken off I'm missing another one and so here's what I've decided to do I took some 5 8 inch long uh, 440 screws ran them through a small washer like a little fender washer I'll run that up through the grommet and then on the other side I use these plastic fender washers to suspend it on top of the the uh, plastic fiber washer or on top of the plastic fender washer will go this little nut um, that I just thread on there and it's a self-locking nut um, in the factories we call these nylock nuts and that's because they have a little nylon insert inside the nut so that you just turn it the nylon will hold it in whatever position you leave it in once you've engaged the nylon part of the nut here is what those look like with the nuts installed and uh, you can see that I didn't have to tighten them down so tight that I didn't have a little bit of play with the record with the uh, motor okay so it's still got nice suspension just like it's supposed to have it's really hard to show it to you here without the platter being rigidly mounted but you'll have to trust me that this thing has got some suspension okay and there is what the bottom side looks like the screw the uh, fender washer and the rubber grommet okay now let me see if I can show you See, there is movement available but it is it's fairly fairly snug but it does provide vibration dampening and that's what I need record players are always a bit of a slog and uh, this is this one's no different it's going to take a couple of uh, videos to get through it so this is a good stopping point I've got the motor mounted I've got the both of the cam wheels both of uh, the cams mounted and I've got the idler wheel mounted on the motor assembly we've already confirmed that the motor is working fine now and that fan is mounted nice and tight so next time we'll go on to connecting up all the linkages for the record changer and getting the platter mounted up so that it works right. And so uh, it's late at night on Saturday. Actually now it's Sunday morning, June the 18th. And uh, from your Western Outpost in Salt Lake City, this is Michael. That's all for now.